this time of year uh, always reminds me of, uh, of 1999. I was 15 years old, and I found myself pinned on my back on the floor in the back of a, a fast-moving, darkly lit van, and I was being choked. And suddenly the van took an unexpected turn left and it put my attacker off balance momentarily with just, it gave me enough time to gather all of my energy that I could and I swung as hard as I could and I connected with his ribs and I felt the air involuntarily leave his lungs and crumple him and that gave me the opportunity to reverse things and now the defender became the attacker and I was on top of him and I was about to get my revenge and as I was about to choke him, he screamed out to the front of the van, Dad, help! <laughs> See, when you grow up in very rural, middle of nowhere, Prince Edward Island, you and your best friend Tom need to create your own fun. Um, and van fight was our favorite game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Now, you may be thinking van fight, that is a very, it's not a very creative name for a game, but it's way better than our original title, which was beat the hell out of each other in the back of a van. Um, also known by its acronym, uh, Boav. Um, it was our favorite game, and, and, and Tom's dad, Dwight, he was not only the driver of the van, um, but he would organize it. Like, he would remove both benches in the van <laughs> to create a ring for us. And then he wasn't only the driver, he was also the referee. And because Tom, Tom was just five foot five at the time and about 105 pounds, I had the advantage. I outweighed Tom by 95 pounds of pure muscle. And by muscle, I mean fat. And I would throw him around. So when I had him on his back at the front of the van, Dwight would very conveniently say, I just got the van tuned up. And he'd hit the gas, throwing me to the back. And then Tom would be on top of me. And then I would grab him. And eventually, I would spin him around and have him against the back of the van. And then Dwight would say something like, oh, there's a cat in the road. And he'd hit the brakes. And I would go flying. And then Tom would be on top of me. Um, Dwight was very biased, because Tom was his son. Um, <laughs> It was a great game, and we loved it. And uh, and we were we were we were hicks. We were um, we were. I would say that we were small town people, but I, that would be a lie. We weren't even from a small town. The houses that Tom and I grew up in were on a dirt road going to the small town. Like. <laughs> That small town blew my mind. There were so many things there that I didn't understand. Like, that, the town had the building with the elevator in it. It was, it was only two-story handicap one, but like there was always a line for it. And uh, it was the closest thing to an amusement park we had. There were some wonderful things about it. And, and we were very small town, so we made our own fun. And, and, and not only were we small town, but uh, small town kids, but we also grew up as teachers' kids. Dwight was uh, our junior, or he was our high school science teacher, and uh, my father, Victor Hogan Sr., um, he, my name's not Victor, it's Sean. He doesn't even go by senior, I just say that to annoy him and remind him of his age. Uh, <laughs> Victor Hogan, he was my disciplinary high school principal. He was, that, that's the sound I made a lot. It was really bad. He, um, I would constantly hear, like I, I envisioned every, t I got in trouble a lot, and to me, like every female teacher that I had, at one point, I imagined them as my mom because eventually I would hear them say the words, I've had enough of you, go see your father. So I, <laughs> Or there'd be a voice on the intercom, it would crackle, and I would hear my dad call a number of people to the office, and then there'd be a pause, and he'd say, Sean, get down here. Um, <laughs> so it was rough growing up with a uh, father as a principal, but we got through it, and, uh, and they were great parents. Um, but they, we had our moments where, you know, my dad did some things that I didn't agree with in terms of discipline. 
Now, on this Halloween, uh, Dwight was driving us around, and we're, we're having uh, our van fight. And uh, we were, this Halloween, we were planning on trick-or-treating. And now trick-or-treating in small town out in the middle of nowhere is not like trick-or-treating in a well-lit city. Um, when, when, you, when some people in the city say trick-or-treat, it's just it rolls off the tongue. They don't even think about what those words mean. When you're in a small town, trick-or-treat uh, to an isolated house is an ultimatum. Um, <laughs> Like, it's the equivalent of you saying, candy, please, or I'm going to fuck your house up. It is, like, one of those. So when we would go out, we had it ready. Like, we were going to do our three levels of tricks. We had everything stocked up. There's three basic levels. The, the, the most basic level is toilet papering trees. That's one thing you do. And I don't know if many of you are, uh, you know, knowledgeable when it comes to this. Um, you all look like decent people. But um, toilet papering involves you buy the toilet paper. Um, and don't cheap out on the, on the cheap stuff. Get the high quality stuff. It has more, more strength to it. And uh, you step on a bit of it. You anchor it. And then you throw it over a tree. That's it. Now, it seems very, um, you know, low-key and not that, you know, ooh, that's not that crazy. But when you think about it, you are doing a very sinister thing to that tree. Like, you are basically saying, Happy Halloween, I'm about to dress you up with your deceased relatives. Um, <laughs> it's... Now, level two of tricking involves soap and it involves, it's a bit riskier because you need to be within close proximity of the house and you soap the windows because it's hard to get off. Um, you do that, and that's level two. And then level three, level three, you throw eggs. Now you save that for people you genuinely don't like. And when you throw eggs, it's very hard to get off. They freeze to the house, you need to scrape them off. It's really annoying. It's very cheap and affordable to do, so it was our go-to method. <laughs> We had a bunch of eggs, and it's also very disrespectful to the homeowner and to global famine. Um, it's, and to chickens. It's just horrible, really. So now we were going tricking, and uh, we were pick, trying to pick a house to go to, and then Dwight mentioned, he said, hey, how about you get Mr. Ramsey's house? Get, get him good. And we are just like, wait a minute, we don't, Mr. Ramsey doesn't even teach us. Like, why would we get him? He's like, oh, I, I heard him say bad things about you the other day. Dwight had ulterior motives. Uh, he had a beef with Mr. Ramsey, so we, he was our only drive, uh, and he's the ref, and I always try to win. So uh, we went to Mr. Ramsey's. We got his house real good. Um, we didn't take out the eggs. We didn't go soap. Just toilet paper. Pretty basic. And then afterwards, we're, it's coming to the end of the night, and uh, we're trying to figure out where to hit next. And then... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm staying at, the, at Dwight's house that night with Tom, and uh, I need to go back there. And uh, my parents are gone. They're, they're, they're gone for the night. They're somewhere else. And, uh, and I just casually mentioned to Dwight, let's go get my house. <laughs> Dwight says, what? I said, Dad, Dad suspended me last week. Um, <laughs> I want to get my house. And Dwight looked at me like a good parent, and he said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, I I've never been so sure in my life, Dwight. And he said, buckle in, let's go. I said, there's no seats in the back. He said, let's just go. And we go. And when we get to the house, I immediately, I break out the toilet paper and I'm throwing it over the house. I am, I am going nuts. Like I start, I immediately dip into the egg inventory and I'm throwing them like crazy. And I got my soap in one hand and eggs in the other. And I'm losing it. Like at one point, I bridged levels, which you never do. I started throwing soap and wiping eggs on the windows. Like I was going crazy. And I'm thinking of like past things that dad has done. Like the time that he called me aside and he said, you got to go home and shave because you're not man enough to grow a beard yet. And like things like that. I'm like, take this, Victor. And then I, I'm just going nuts. And at one point, I'm thinking like about the time that he called me aside in the cafeteria in front of everybody. And he's just like, you shouldn't wear sweatpants to school anymore until you can get control over your hormones. And I was like, take it. Take the 
this soap and I'm going crazy and I'm thinking to myself like this is amazing that me and my friend and my friend's dad are doing this together we're getting them good and then I stop for a second and I'm breathing heavy and I notice that it's silent <laughs> and I turn and I look and, and Dwight and Thomas haven't even left the van yet <laughs> they're standing by the sign just And I got to witness this beautiful moment as Dwight put his arm around Thomas and he looked him in the, in, the, in the eyes and he just said, son, I want you to know I love you. <laughs> now as this happened, our neighbors um, heard the commotion and one of them came running over and, and we ran and we got in the van and we took off. And then the next day, Dwight dropped me off and my dad was standing outside and he's just looking at the house. And he calls me over and, uh, and he says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn from this. We're going to clean this. And when people do things like this to you, all you can do is you can grow yourself. And you just, we're going to clean this. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to get some gloves. And he hands me a bucket of soap and, ironically, and... <laughs> bunch of other things, cleaning products, and I start cleaning. And then I think to myself, it's amazing that of all the things to bring my dad and I close together like this and bond, it's something like this. And as I'm scraping an egg off my own house, and I'm cleaning one of the windows, and I look in, and, I'm, and I see my dad napping <laughs> on the couch. And I think to myself, maybe next year. <laughs> anyway, you guys have been so much fun. Thank you so much.